So whatever I write in the memo of advice, this is David's call though, right? And Tracy knew that when she gave it to you. It's one of those tricky matters he'll personally review. It's not your normal I agree and so direct. They, they really just want to see how you're coping. If I can stay calm and apply sound legal advice to all the issues? Correct. Why do I feel like the kid whose teachers just told him what's in the exam? You still have to pass the test though. through the file thoroughly let you know my thinking. Uh, don't be too soft-hearted. Why do you think David gave it to me? Yeah. Janet. Hi. Can I get you a cup of tea? Headache's part of the job. Starting to learn that. Do you uh, have anything interesting on foot? Does a mother killing her two sons count as interesting? Why do the women here get landed with the female killers? I mean, I know why, but why? You're on the Mervich case with Reese, aren't you? The bolt cutter babes? I've been having nightmares about it. Don't tell any of the boys that. I know. Why should having an emotional response to something be automatically regarded as weakness? Feel what you like outside and hear you're paid to be objective. Doesn't it weigh you down? That's what stops wearing you down. Look on it as self-preservation if it helps. Do you mind if I ask what was wrong with the woman in your filicide case? Depression. Wrong? Well, there's got to be something wrong with you if you kill your children. Do you think it's a crime against nature? Don't you? Not necessarily. People kill their kids for all sorts of reasons. Great. Well, I guess it's Medea's fault. She started it. Medea was framed by Euripides. Other sources of the time say that the children were killed by the good citizens of Corinth. Really? Can't believe everything you read. But was your defendant in her right mind? Should I ask her if there was a policeman standing at her elbow? A uh, policeman? It's a modification of the McNaughton test, which is? Oh, McNaughton's the basis for the common law defence of insanity. Says that it's not fair to hold a person responsible for acts he or she couldn't control or didn't recognise as wrong. Very good. <laughs> Where's the policeman's elbow fit in? Well, it poses the question. Would the defendant still have committed the crime if there were a policeman standing at her elbow? I bet Tracers you started work on the Wallace case. More happy families, yes. Do you know who you want to put on it? I was thinking Erin. She is already instructing on the Mervich case with Rhys Kowalski. It's a big job. We've already had some preliminary discussions about it. Ben McMahon's been pretty quiet. We've been keeping him on lighter stuff since his grandfather's murder, but I think he's ready for more. He could be good. You've always been keen on the handsome young men, haven't you? He's very bright. I think he's been underutilised in his time with us. I'm sure you do. And a male perspective could be useful in this case. Oh, but it's your choice, of course. Yes, it is. Thank you, Tracy. Erin? You busy? Yes. No. No. Come in. How would you like to add another murdering woman to your workload? The one who killed her kids. Got it in one. To be honest, I'm not sure. Was it something I said? You said I needed to be objective. Objectively, I, I don't think my subjective responses are quite ready to tackle two of these things at the same time. Have I just blown my career out of the water? Oh, I appreciate your honesty. But remember, if one of the blokes ever offers you something like that, it might be prudent to take it.
Pity the defendant's not a bloke. Blokes always get done for murdering these things with kids. The juries think men do it deliberately for revenge, but believe women do it when they're off their heads from hormones and PND. The hormone thing doesn't necessarily work to a woman's advantage. It looks like it from where I sit. <sighs> Thanks. Being at the mercy of our so-called hormones is what stopped women getting jobs as pilots and astronauts. Can't have people doing those jobs who go mad once a month. I sit corrected. Perhaps you think Mrs. Wallace was just a good old-fashioned hysteric, a kind of throwback to Victorian times. Okay, I won't mention hormones again, or the fact that my testicles are now microscopic. We're just debating a possible approach the defence might take, aren't we? Yep. Working with Janet King again? Janet! I think we should pursue a murder charge. No hormones? I believe we can show mental capacity. Where's the evidence of intention? The fact that she sedated the children before smothering them would indicate she thought she was doing something distressing to them. Something distressing might not be enough to establish mens rea, but go on. She tried killing herself whilst waiting for the ambulance. I mean, doesn't that suggest that she knew she'd done something terribly wrong? Do we know that the deaths of the children are definitely the reason she attempted suicide? She just killed her own children. It's not exactly a stretch of the imagination. What's a possible motive? Well, I thought we only need to provide intent. It's not essential, but motive can help prove intent. Okay. Um, how about they're about to separate? Exactly. Oh, I've organised for Josh Wallace to come in and talk to us tomorrow. Thanks. Ben? Yeah? It won't always be dead kids. But not be. I'm with you on that. Come in. <laughs> I'm heading home to a computer that gives me net access. Yes, I heard about that. You're welcome to use my computer anytime I'm not on it. Oh, thanks. I've been thinking about the overlap between your child killer and my bolt cutter women. Yes? Could it be argued that the battered woman syndrome attracts the McNaughton rule? They were so traumatised that they couldn't understand the act was wrong? I haven't heard it used like that, but I'd say it's arguable. Cool. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Oh, and thanks for offering me that case today. I really appreciate it. I did it for purely selfish motives. And thanks for the advice too, you know, about turning stuff down. You would have learned eventually. Well, thanks for the shortcut. Are you okay? Should I call someone? No, no, it's fine. It'll pass. Ah, oh, that's a bit melodramatic, wasn't it? Are you sure you're alright? I'm sorry. It's none of my business. I'll, I'll go home and leave you in peace. I'm on IVF. Oh, that sounds melodramatic too, doesn't it? Sorry, I just... I just don't want you walking out of here thinking I'm about to drop dead of cancer. Of course, now I've told you I'm going to have to kill you. Kind of silence. My turn to thank you. Do you need anything? Pain or pass. Sorry, this is way too much information, but you're here, I'm hormonal, and you cop it. So? What is it? Oh, it's just a more extreme version of the symptoms you get when you're ovulating. It's worse for me, though, because they're stimulating my ovaries to increase the number of follicles. Fun. That's one way of describing it. You've been doing it for long? I just started. I get to use this ghastly nasal spray thing. And this is kind of silent stuff. Of course. Oh, I don't know how you deal with all the shit in here. Years of practice. No, it sounds weird, but it just doesn't touch me at all. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Wallace. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Um... Jason was holding this when I found him. I'd like you to have it so you can remember every day what you have to do. I think you should hang on to it. You might regret giving it away. This is just a 
job to you, isn't it? Maybe seeing that every morning will remind you what's real. I took Jimmy Butcher up to the office after the party. We were both really drunk. Or at least I was. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe it was all a setup. You showed him the file? He says he got an anonymous text about it, but he might just be protecting me. You don't remember? I was pretty out of it. Some bits of the night are a complete blank. Is that what you told the police? They haven't spoken to me yet. What? Well, sometimes they hold off questioning their lead suspect, hoping they'll relax and do something to incriminate themselves. Like arrange to meet Jimmy in public, which is what I've just done. Do you believe Jimmy? I don't think I trust him. Was it his suggestion to go up to the office? I really don't know. Well, if someone had tipped him off, he could have been on the hunt for the file. Yeah, but that could have been me at the party. Do I go to the police? Risk your job over something you might not have done. Oh, I don't know what else to do. Wait. Thank you. I've got no one to talk to about this. You got a couple of secrets of mine too. Thanks. You and Erin seem to be getting on well. Do you need me for something? No, no. She's quite attractive, isn't she? I'm sure Reese thinks so too. Fuck off, Tracy. Jack, can I disturb you? Already quite disturbed as it is. Come in. Nice bear. What now? We have no proof of Mary's pre-existing illness. Well, Bruce would be a pretty compelling witness. Who might not want to testify. So we talk her into it. Well, it just depends how scared of Josh she is. And if she does, it's her word against Josh's. And they both have an agenda. One to protect and one to destroy. Wouldn't Mary's diary be material evidence of her mental instability? If it ever existed, we've only got Ruth's word. Well, if he did, then Josh could be charged with perverting the course of justice. He's a grief-stricken father who's just lost everything. He might not have known what he was doing was wrong. What, even threatening Ruth? If he did. What, you don't believe her? It's not a matter of believing someone. It's a matter of assessing the available evidence and proceeding But Janet, there. Janet, two kids are dead here, yeah? I know. But whenever you get overwhelmed by the emotion of it, go back to first principles. You win. I'll never be tougher than you are. Let me know when the psych report comes in. Excuse me, Janet. This was just dropped off for you at security. Thanks. It's all right. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you.